the way we're presently treating patients, we've lobotomized the patients they, um, to an hematocrit below 45%, and then we see them for, after several weeks or months, really intermittently. And when they return, let's say after two to three months, if their hematocrit is elevated, we phlebotomize them again once or several times. So during that period of time between visits, it's highly likely that these patients have an elevated hematocrit, but it's really not been appreciated because we don't have continued testing of these uh, patients. So with the administration of the drug, we've been able to remain, to sustain, to have sustained hematic control throughout the period of observation. Um, and I think yet to be determined, but highly likely we're, we're hopeful that this will uh, lead to a reduction in significant numbers of thrombotic events in the long term. Um, I think from the patient point of view, it's really quite rewarding uh, because they have um, independence of the need to come to the clinic because they're assured that their hematocrit is well controlled. Also, several of the patients um, have had relief of systemic symptoms such as fatigue and uh, itching or aquagenic pruritus that is associated with polycythemia vera. So, it's like a, it's really, as you can think of, a two prong positive, of, well, three prong really, independence of the patient. They treat themselves at home. Uh, they have relief of systemic symptoms. And then, thirdly, they have sustained medical control with, without the needs of repeated phlebotomies, which to some people are quite traumatic, or um, people are frightened of getting phlebotomies, or, free, or sometimes occasionally elderly patients can become syncopal or actually their congestive heart failure can be exacerbated. So it really is a, a, a major step forward. One could really consider it a paradigm shift in the way we, we will treat these patients with polycythemia vera.